I want to get some analysis right now from conservative attorney George Conway. Do you think uh, that this ruling by the judge that we just heard about, George, will fuel Trump's arguments that he's a victim and that he's being muzzled? He's going to make that argument anyway. And so, I mean, he, he made this request, no doubt, knowing that it would probably be denied. It's a highly unusual thing for a party who is represented by counsel to act on his own behalf to give, to cross-examine a witness, or in this case, to, to give a closing argument. And all the judge did here was saying, okay, well, I'll let you do it, which I think is more than he really had to, but you have to obey the rules that lawyers have to follow when they're making closing arguments. You can't testify when you're, when you're giving a closing argument. You have to make, uh, he didn't add this one, but you have to tell the truth. That's something Donald Trump probably isn't capable of doing. Um, and you have, to, you have to adhere to the general rules that, that govern uh, trial proceedings, including the relevance, and, and you can't make personal attacks. Uh, from, and, but that's, you know, basically that would be, I'm sure, 80 or 90 percent of what Trump would do. And it's understandable that he would, he would, it's actually kind of understandable from his narcissistic standpoint that he would put this out there to force the judge to choose to either apply the rules to him, in which case he'd be saying he's muzzled. Um, if he agreed to them, he's not going to agree to them because he believes rules shouldn't apply to him. And then um, he knows that if the judge tries to enforce the rules and he refuses to come to to accept the rules which Trump would normally do he gets to play the victim so he's going to do that anyway he's going to do that regardless of whether this particular request was made or granted he's going to always claim the victim he is always the victim everybody is always doing something right. wrong to him and he's never wrong what do you think his strategy is in showing up at these various court proceedings, even though he doesn't necessarily have to be there? He, he could avoid them, but he shows up there. Yeah, I think, I think it's, you know, first of all, he, it, I mean, it's, it's just, again, it's, it's a function of his extreme narcissism. He thinks he has to be the center of every proceeding. He thinks he can affect the outcome of the proceeding. He then loves to set it as a situation up, as narcissists do, to try to play the victim because he knows if he loses, then he, gets, he, he wins that way as well. But there's an initial reason. I mean, he showed up at this argument down the street uh, the other day uh, at, at, the, at, at the DC circuit, uh, in part because that, that one really matters to him. That, his liberty is at stake there. He really does need to get that proceeding pushed off. And the immunity arguments he's making were, were basically the only th function they really would serve in the end is delay um, with a very, very, very long, almost infinitesimal uh, shot at getting actual immunity. Um, he's, you know, it's about, the that's about his freedom. New York involves his money. That's about we money. Know that's, that's, in, about as important that's important to too. as anything. That's important. But of course, he can't, if you spend the rest of your life in jail, he can't make money. So he's got, he's got problems on both ends. He certainly does. Uh, uh, we heard the arguments, uh, as we all remember, from Trump's attorneys about the scope of presidential immunity. And now Trump has reacted to that. He wrote this on his Truth Social uh, site. He said, if a president does not have immunity, the court will be opening the floodgates to prosecuting former presidents. An opposing hostile party will be doing it for any reason all of the time. You think there's any merit at all to that? No, I mean, look, the reason why he's been charged with 91 counts in four different jurisdictions is he's a criminal. And we haven't had a president with, you know, I mean, Nixon cre um, uh, committed crimes. We have not had this level of criminality, though, ever. And, you know, Nixon would have been prosecuted if he had not been pardoned by Gerald Ford. We have not, I mean, the fact is we're not going to see floodgates because this is an extreme case, an unusual case. I mean, we've had a run of good luck until now that we're having presidents who are not as, you know, attempting to, to overthrow the government and try to retain power. Um, this is unusual, and it happened because he is unusual. It's his fault, and we, we can't expect, it's not, this is never going to happen again, I hope. I mean, if, if it does, then we've got big, bigger problems. And if all of this winds up before the U.S. Supreme Court, we know that three of the nine justices were Trump appointees. How does that play into this, you think? I, I honestly don't think in this particular case, um, I, I don't think they're going to vote for Trump because he's Trump. I think they're going to vote on the merits of the claim. And I think, and I think people are underestimating the possibility. I'm not saying it will happen, but there is a not, um, a not insubstantial possibility that the Supreme Court won't even take this case if the D.C. Circuit writes a very 
good opinion, which I think, based upon the questioning I heard yesterday, I think they will. You know, very dramatic indeed, very significant and historic, we should say, as well. How do you think Republican voters are looking at this whole issue of presidential immunity? I, I don't think they're even focused in at all. I mean, I think they're just, they just, I, I think Republican voters, the bulk of them uh, are, are uh, the kind that Chris Christie wasn't able to reach. Uh, and uh, I think they basically have tuned out reality. And tuning out reality means that they're taking what Trump says at face value and just saying, oh, it's a witch hunt. It's a multiple, multiple jurisdictional witch hunt. Everybody's out to get him. And if they deny him immunity, well, then that, the, the courts are fixed. The, the, the District of Columbia area is a terrible place. And if the Supreme Court denies him immunity, they're going to say, oh, what unfaithful appointees they are. Yeah. That's sure, the Trump, that's sure Trump Trumpish. Like that. All right, George, yeah. thank All you right. very much. George Conway with excellent analysis as always.